In my previous tutorial, I explained how to build an RC paper airplane using a ready-made template, how to set up the FlySky FS i6 transmitter, and I also shared the flight test results. I learned a lot of new things while working on the RC paper airplane. As this was my first time to fly an RC airplane, I was very happy. But still there was something missing. I wasn't feeling that inner happiness. As an engineer, I'm supposed to design my own RC airplane rather than using a ready-made template. So I started to study some research papers, watched a lot of videos and finally I was able to start my own designing. So in today's episode, you will learn how to design and build your own RC airplane. I will explain in detail how to calculate each and every part of the RC plane so that you can make smaller or bigger RC airplanes. It really doesn't matter whether you're using balsa wood, styrofoam or other types of foam board sheets or 3D printed parts. The calculations will remain exactly the same. There are important things which I will also explain with the help of these 3D models. You can see this one is normal and to the other one the aerodynamics is applied. When you cut parts of the model it really affects the aspect ratio and in turns it affects the RC plane stability. So I will explain in detail how to keep the same aspect ratio even if you cut some parts of the RC airplane. Anyhow, before designing and making the bigger RC airplane, I started with the micro version of the airplane to test my calculations and I was pretty happy with the results. Finally, I did calculations for this big RC plane. Don't be afraid if I'm using two brushless motors. It has nothing to do with the basic RC plane designing. The reason I'm using two brushless motors is because my RC plane is made of balsa wood and it's a little heavier. You can make the lighter version of the same RC airplane using foam board sheets. This way you can use a single brushless motor. First let's take a look at the different parts of the RC airplane and then we will start the design calculations. Coat length is the width of the wing. The length of the wing is referred to as the wingspan. This is the leading edge of the wing. This is the trailing edge of the wing. These are the ailerons. This is the fuselage. This is the horizontal stabilizer. This is the elevator. This is the vertical stabilizer. With the vertical stabilizer, there is another part which is called a rudder. I have included this in the design calculations, but I'm not using this in this model. If you want, you can add the rudder to your RC plane. After you know about the different parts, now it's time to start with the calculations. Without any further delay, let's get started. Components and tools used in this video can be purchased from Amazon. The components purchase links are given in the description. While designing an RC plane, we usually start by fixing the coat length or the wingspan. Let's start by fixing the coat length. So, coat length C is equal to 8 inches. The airfoil thickness should be 12 to 15 percent of the coat length. So, airfoil thickness is equal to 12th percent times 8 inches which is equal to 0.96 inches. If you take a look at my RC plane you will see I didn't add airfoil. I did this on purpose. I want to check what happens when the airfoil is not added. After performing the initial tests then obviously I will add the airfoil. So anyhow the airfoil thickness is 0.96 inches. This is close to 1 inch, so you can select 1 inch or you can proceed with this value. There are a few thumb rules which are used in error modeling. So according to these rules, the wingspan should be 5 to 6 times of the coat length. As our coat length is 8 inches, so wingspan is equal to 8 times 5 which is equal to 40 inches. As we are using a rectangular type wing, so its area can be calculated by multiplying the wingspan with the coat length. 
So wing area is equal to wingspan times cord length is equal to 40 times 8 which is equal to 320 square inches. The aspect ratio determines the gliding performance of the RC plane. Wingspan is directly proportional to the aspect ratio. So as the wingspan increases, your aspect ratio also increases. That is, as the wingspan increases, the gliding performance of your wing increases. So for this particular RC plane, the aspect ratio is 5. The fuselage length should be 75% of the wingspan. So fuselage length is equal to 75% times 40, which is equal to 30 inches. The fuselage is further divided into three parts, F1, F2 and F3. F1 is uh, from the start to the leading edge of the wing. F1 should be 20% of the fuselage length. This is called the nose length and F2 which is the tail length from wing trailing edge to the leading edge of the horizontal stabilizer and it should be 40% of the fuselage length. F3 is the remaining length of the fuselage and this is the width of the horizontal stabilizer. So the nose length is 6 inches, the tail length is 12 inches and the horizontal stabilizer width is 4 inches. The fuselage height should be 10 to 15 percent of the fuselage length. So fuselage height equals 10 percent times 30 which is equal to 3 inches. Next on the list is the sizing of the control surface ailerons. It should be 1 by 8 times cord length. This is for the strip type ailerons. So aileron size is equal to 1 by 8 times 8 which is equal to 1 inch. The horizontal stabilizer area should be 15 to 20 percent of the wing area. Our calculated wing area was 320 square inches. So horizontal stabilizer area equals 320 times 15 percent which is equal to 48 square inches. We know the horizontal stabilizer width and area. So now we can easily calculate the horizontal stabilizer length which is 12 inches. The elevator area should be 20 to 30 percent of the horizontal stabilizer area. While we assume the elevator length is the same as the stabilizer length. Elevator length is equal to stabilizer length which is equal to 12 inches. Elevator area is equal to 48 times 20 percent and this is equal to 9.6 square inches. Is elevator area equals to width multiplied by length so we can find the width of the elevator 9.6 equals width times 12. So elevator width is equal to 0.8 inches. Area of the vertical stabilizer should be 33% of the horizontal stabilizer area. So vertical stabilizer area equals 33% times 48 square inches which is equal to 16 square inches. Let's keep the width same as the horizontal stabilizer width. So vertical stabilizer width equals 4 inches. Vertical stabilizer is as tall as its width. So vertical stabilizer height equals 4 inches. Rudder area should be 1 by 2 times vertical stabilizer area. So the rudder area is 8 square inches. Length of the rudder is same as the vertical stabilizer height. We know rudder area is equal to height times width. So rudder width is equal to 2 inches. The CG or center of gravity should be set at 25% to 33% of the cord length from the leading edge of the wing. Our cord length is 8 inches, so our CG is a 2 inches from the leading edge. Angle of attack should be 3 to 4 degrees. For now, I didn't add any angle of attack because I want to check how this affects the flight. Before designing the bigger RC airplane, I decided to start with the micro version of the RC plane to test my calculations. I also designed a 3D model of the same micro airplane. The reason I started with this micro version of the RC plane is to understand the effect of the CG or center of gravity. 
the angle of attack and also to test my design calculations. Let's check this without adjusting the center of gravity or CG. As I already explained, the CG should be set at 25 to 33% of the cord length from the leading edge of the wing. Our cord length is 2 inches, so the center of gravity is at 0.5 inches from the leading edge. As you can see currently, this micro airplane is tail heavy, which is not good. Let's add some weight to the nose side. Now you can see the center of gravity is adjusted. Your RC plane should be a little nose heavy. Never fly an airplane with tail heavy. Now you can clearly see the difference. Anyhow, after I was done with my initial tests, it was time to start working on the bigger version of the RC airplane. I started off by designing my 3D models in SOLIDWORKS 2016. I have these two models. This one is with the actual dimensions and this one is also is for the actual dimensions but with some aerodynamics applied. You can clearly see the horizontal stabilizer and vertical stabilizers are modified. The surface areas are exactly the same even after cutting these portions. Now I will explain how I did it. As I explained earlier we need to keep the aspect ratios same. To keep the surface area same, even after cutting portions of the vertical and horizontal stabilizers, we have two options. As we cut any part, then we should accordingly increase the length or the width. In my case, I kept the width constant and I changed the length. So this has the same surface area of 16 square inches. So you can increase and decrease these values to check how the surface area changes. So if you are designing any part, I highly recommend you should use a designing software to check and confirm your designing parameters. Anyhow, after the calculations and 3D designing, the next part was to build the RC airplane as per the values we just calculated. The building part is really simple when you have all the dimensions. In my last video tutorial, I have already explained how to fix the servo motors, how to attach the ailerons, and how to set up the FlySky FSI6 transmitter and receiver. So this is our final model as per the dimensions that we just calculated. The overall weight of this RC plane after adding all the electronics is 1306 grams. This is the reason I'm using two brushless motors. These are Skywalker 2600 kV brushless motors. Each motor is capable of producing over plus 1000 grams of thrust. As the overall weight of this RC plane is 1306 grams, so these brushless motors with over plus 2 kg thrust will easily lift this RC plane. I'm using 30 ampere ESCs, 2200 mAh LiPo battery. 6 channels FSI6 receiver and transmitter, small servo motors for controlling ailerons and the elevator. One more thing, I am using the same channel 3 for controlling both the brushless motors. The last tip is to check the center of gravity. You can add some weight on the nose side if it's tail heavy. I did perform some tests and the results were pretty bad as I was expecting. This was due to the leg of airfoil and the nose front was pretty flat. Anyhow, I selected the KFM2 type airfoil as this is easy to build and add more strength to the wing. Previously, I did calculations for the flat bottom type airfoil which of course you can use but for now, I will continue with this KFM2 type airfoil because the KFM2 type airfoil is good for heavier models. This gives higher lift and gives nice stability. 
The KFM2 type air file should be 50% of the wing cord. As you know, the wing cord is 8 inches, so 50% times 8 inches is equal to 4 inches. Its thickness should be 7% to 9% of the cord. So the KFM2 air file thickness is equal to 7% times 8 inches, which is equal to 0.56 inches. After modifying my RC airplane, once again I check the center of gravity. So let's start with the final flight test. You can see the RC plane is quite stable. The KFM2 type airfoil is simply amazing. All my calculations are correct. The center of gravity is perfect. The control surfaces are just cool and quite responsive. I successfully made the lift turn, then the tree blocked my view. I got nervous and I pushed the stick all the way to the lift. The plane rolled, it was upside down and I crashed it. This was completely destroyed. I'm a bait pilot. I was supposed to move the stick a little to the lift. So I really don't know what to say. I just crashed it. I'm really good at destroying RC planes. Now I can make my own RC planes but I don't know how to fly them. For me every flying mission is a kind of one way mission. But I won't stop here. I will improve my piloting skills. I hope you guys will learn a lot of my mistakes. So one lesson from this crash is never move the control stick to the extreme limit otherwise the plane will roll and if you are a beginner like me then there is a high probability of crashing your RC plane but seriously I'm very happy I did my own calculations and, uh, and I flew this 1.5 kg RC plane with such a nice stability so after flying this heavier version of the RC plane now I will confidently work on the lighter versions of the same model but before I'm going to make another model first I will improve my piloting skills anyways I hope you have learned something new from this video support me on patreon for more videos I hope you like today's episode like and share this video with your friends see you in next episode and thanks for watching